So watching all of your favorite shows on your Freeview or satellite cable TV subscription box or package at home and watching all your recorded programs is absolutely great. But it's absolutely garbage as soon as you walk out of your front door because you've left your box at home and that's it. You're leaving the content here. What if I told you you could take it with you and do it yourself? Let's do this. So funnily enough, I am a guy with a load of gear and quite a few clever ideas as to which I'm going to explain to you guys today. But before I go ahead and do that, I just do want to do a disclaimer and say at the start of this video that, well, please follow at your own risk. Because in some places in the world, this could be illegal or even in the UK in the future, this could be illegal. So this is just for demonstrational purposes only. Now the reason I'm even talking about this, or this even crossed my mind, is because I came across a product called a Slingbox. Now a Slingbox is a product designed to do specifically this, to send your, well, Freeview box or your set-top box or whatever you want to plug into it at home, anywhere in the world so you can watch it on a computer, a web-connected computer, or your phone or tablet. But the problem is, these devices are quite expensive and I've used one and the quality was absolutely rubbish and I primarily wanted to use it for watching football and for football you need good quality so I decided I wanted to build something myself and I'm going to show you guys how to do it today so let's look at the equipment down here so this is my skybox this is going to be well our freeview box in our situation as you can see it's got an HDMI out which will go up to the television that is all fine and dandy so we'll set that off to one side we've then got an HDMI Coupler or, well, splitter. So you go one in and two out. So that's going to go there. And then we've got an HD60S. So I'm going to explain how to connect all this up, by the way. So stay tuned. That's going to go here. And then we've got ourselves a little baby computer. And then we've got this little magic device to tie everything together. So essentially, what's going to happen now? is our skybox is gonna send an HDMI signal to this 4K splitter. This 4K splitter is then gonna go ahead and split the HDMI signal so we can have one of the HDMIs going to our TV, so our skybox still works on the TV, in the living room or wherever, and one of them is gonna go out to our capture card. Now I'm using an HD60S. You can use any capture card you want. Obviously the better capture card, the better the quality. You could use this, you could use a Camlink from Elgato. You could use an Ava Media capture card. To be honest, any cheap and cheerful HD capture card is gonna capture HDMI from this and pipe it through to the computer. The computer's gonna be running some software, some streaming software, so we can go ahead and stream our Skybox to our own private RMTP server, and then this, well, this magical device is gonna allow me to control the Skybox via my mobile phone and Amazon, well, Smart Assistant and Google Home Smart Assistant connected devices. So wherever I am in the world, I can then control the channel on the Skybox. Make sense? Good. Okay, so one more time, and just because I've made this and it looks kind of cool and also like a sort of evil genius type device, I've got the Skybox here, which is our Freeview box. We've got the HDMI out going into our HDMI splitter, which is then giving us two HDMI outputs from our Skybox or Freeview box. One of them is free for our TV, which is what our box would have been plugged into in the first place. One of them then goes round into this Elgato HD60S capture card, which is gonna be plugged into our computer to capture the Skybox onto the computer, and then we'll show you guys how to set it up. One thing to note though, a lot of you were saying, Alex, if you're using the HD60S, it has an HDMI pass-through port, so you don't really need the HDMI splitter. Well, you do, you see, because DHCP exists. I think that's how you say it. And it's essentially a protocol that means that you can't record like a device, like a Skybox, onto a computer. The Elgato will be like, no, you're not allowed to record this. Well, this here, HDMI splitter actually gets rid of it. So if you're gonna do this, get this special HDMI splitter because it totally gets rid of that. Right, now we hook this into the computer, we hook our Skybox up, and we hopefully receive our Sky picture on the computer. 
So once you've gone ahead and plugged your capture card into your computer and downloaded the drivers from the capture card website, you're going to want to go ahead and install a program called OBS. Now this is a piece of software that people use to stream video. So as you guys can see, if I open my OBS window on my computer here that's going to do all of my streaming, and please bear in mind it takes a second to open, there we go, hopefully on here we should see the skybox. So there we go, that is the image of the skybox on the computer. Now, how are we gonna set up a private live stream? Because obviously you don't want to live stream your Skybox straight to twitch.tv, because that would be really, really illegal. So now we're on the computer and we can confirm that we've got our Skybox in our OBS software working absolutely fine through our capture card. There's a few things that we need to do, like set a static IP for your computer. Now, if you don't know how to do this, simply follow along as to what I'm doing on screen. To do this, you're going to want to open a command prompt window and just simply type in ipconfig and then hit the enter key. Now, there's a few things you'll need from this window. You're going to need your IPv4 address, which is your IP address of the computer, and then you're also going to need to jot down the default gateway. This is your router's or router's address. We're going to have to change some settings in our router later. So the next step is we need to set this computer's static IP address. So at the moment, every time this computer is turned on, it will get a new IP address from the router. So to make sure it stays static and stays the same, it was 10.1.10.19, we need to set a static IP IP. And to do that, well, just follow along on screen. And here, you can set the static IP address. You're going to want to put your default gateway in the default gateway. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. And then you need to set yourself a DNS server. And once you've done that, click OK. Everything will be normal. And all that means is that now your computer will stay on that IP address on your home LAN forever. Now what you need to do is open up your internet browser and log on to your router or your default gateway using the IP address we got before. And obviously everybody has different routers, so there's different manuals online as to how to port forward, but you need to port forward exactly as I am right now. So let me show you. So as you guys can see, this is the port forwarding rule. This is what you're going to want to pipe into your router or router. So as you can see, I've named it OBS. The port is 1935. That will be global for all of you guys. And then the forward IP, this is the IP address of your computer. Remember the IP address we statically set on our computer? That goes in there. So mine was 10.1.10.19. And then the forward port is the same as the port, which is 1935. The protocol is TCP and then you just want to go ahead click save and then now you can log out your router. Now the last thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is download Mona Server. I'll put that in the description. This is going to work alongside OBS to make this stream active. So what we're going to go ahead and do is unzip Mona Server. I've already done it. I'm going to launch Mona Server right now and then I'm going to launch back into OBS and show you guys how to set that up. So in the settings of OBS, you guys are going to want to go ahead and simply just copy me. So first off, go to stream. Now the service is going to be custom and your server is going to be RTMP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address that we set statically of the computer and then another forward slash. And that's it. Click save. Now you want to go down to output and this is going to differ depending on what your upload speed is. So you need to go ahead and do a speed test, convert your upload speed into kilobits per second and put the maximum you can in the video bitrate. I'm using 15 megabits per second and I've actually got a 19 megabit a second upload speed at this house. So 15 is nice, 1080p streaming and we've also got some overhead for other people uploading things in the house. And then the encoder preset, this is a different one. I'm using max quality because my computer is, well, kind of a little bit beefy, but if your computer is struggling and you find that your stream is lagging, you can go ahead and put it on max performance, but I'm going to leave mine on max quality. And there you go, that's it for this page. Last one is going down to video. Now the base is going to be 1080p because that will be the resolution of your free view box or your cable satellite box. And then our output scaled is actually going to be the resolution of our stream. So if you want to do a 1080p stream, set this to 1080. If you want to do a 720p stream, drop this down to 720. It all depends on your upload speed. If you can do a 1080p stream, great for you, go for it. But if you've only got, let's say a three or four meg upload speed, well, drop it down to 720 because you've got a lower bitrate. And then I use a 48 FPS custom value because I think 60 is just a little bit too much for watching TV. And then once you've done that, you click OK and then you click start streaming. Done. 
The last thing you want to go ahead and do is go to Google and type in what is my IP address and this is what we're going to be connecting to outside of this house to pick up our stream. So now, well, I'm in my parents' house at the moment, let's go around to my house and uh, see if we can set this up and get our skybox working all the way, well, down the street at my house. Okay then you lot, so we've set up the computer, it's picking up our sky or our free view box or whatever you want to call it, our cable box. It's got it into OBS, we've got our little custom command prompt running which is then opening up our RMTP server. We've then gone ahead and opened the port in our router or router. So now I'm outside of the house, I'm actually at my house. What I'm going to go ahead and do is download a little program on my computer or Mac called VLC Player. Now once you've gone ahead and downloaded that and you've got it open, you want to go ahead and open a network location by doing this. And then you're going to want to go ahead and type in RTMP colon forward slash forward slash your IP address and then a colon 1935 forward slash and then once you've done that you simply scroll down and click on play and then voila your stream or whatever's in OBS will show and this is now your private live stream. You can put it full screen and the quality should be, well, just insane. Okay, so this is where the little RM Mini comes into play, and this is me showing you how inexpensive all of this is. So the RM Mini is actually how I'm going to be sat here in my house and control all of the channels on the Skybox. Like I said, all the links to everything in the description. The RM Mini is about £17. You connect it to your Wi-Fi, you tell it what set-top box you have or what TV you have, you download the app on your phone, and essentially now on my phone I've got a full-on Sky controller. Now the app goes a little bit further than just having the controller on your phone, it actually allows you to tie it to a Google Assistant or an Amazon Smart Assistant. So I can say something along the lines of, turn on BBC One. You got it, activating the BBC One. It'll go ahead and pipe in the number for BBC One and thus the channel will change. And that is how you control the TV. Seeing as we've come this far, I wanted to take it one step further. So as you guys can see, on my Corsair keyboard here, I've actually got a button that's now labelled TV. When I go ahead and click this button, it goes ahead and runs a macro which I have set up, which automatically launches VLC and loads up the stream and then puts it full screen. So I'm just sat here browsing the web and I want to watch TV, well, I click the TV button, it opens up VLC, loads the stream, and we're in. But with that being said guys, as you can see, it's all working. We're now streaming our set-top box from one location to another, using something we've set up off of our own back and not paying another company like Slingbox to do so. And I'm sure you guys can find all of the parts like a capture card, the little IR mini blaster which is £17, and a HDMI switch for probably less than a Slingbox anyway. And Tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure a lot of you have probably just got a computer or even an old one that you don't use lying around anyway. So why not repurpose it? And you don't just have to stream your set-top box, you can stream absolutely anything. You could even stream a webcam if you wanted to. You could use this as a CCTV solution. It can be used for anything, essentially. But there you go. I'm going to leave it here. My name's been Alex. This has been really fun to sort of do off my own cuff. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Adios. Guys, if you want to check out some more TechFlow quick tips, we've got two videos right there. And if you found this video quite enjoyable to watch, the subscribe button is to the left. We'd appreciate it if you'd smash it. Thanks, guys.